guys, what is going on? Welcome to another video of Grim Dawn Ashes of Malmoth. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be talking about my Conjurer. Now this character is one of my favorites. I love pet builds. Still in my heart. It's what I like to do. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not going to stop updating the Death Knight. I am going to talk about him in the near future. I'm still trying to fine tune and polish him out a little bit. But this character is in the same process. She's actually into a transition to where the damage is changing, the build is changing, and so far it's a lot of fun, so I kind of want to demonstrate and show you guys what I'm doing with this character. So let's get into skills real quick. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to try to go as quick as possible. More or less, kind of the same setup as my other Conjurer video, but I did drop a lot of points out of Briar's Horn, and I dropped a lot of points out of Hellhound. The reason I did this is because I'm trying to pump up the Hellfire, and I'm trying to pump up the Storm Spirit, and I was trying to pump up the Aspect of the Guardian. So I'm just going to go over the synergies pretty quick. Obviously, this is going to give your pets more elemental damage. This gives your pets more percent fire and flat chaos damage with a little bit of retaliation. This also procs a little bit of retaliation on chance. I did drop 5 out of the Curse of Frailty, and that's because since I'm converting a lot of physical into lightning, I obviously want to keep my elemental resistance pierce as high as possible. We do have Blood of Dreek, 16 out of 16. Aspect of the Guardian, this gives 12 physical resistance, which is really nice. The reason why that's so good is because the Emboldening Presence buff from the Briar's Warren also gives 12% physical resistance. Obviously, you get a lot of OA, all damage, all retaliation, bleed resist, which is also super good with this, so a lot of good synergy there. Grasping Vines, like I said, super good for one-pointers, really good CC. Nardrogan's Pact, keep that max, obviously, for the flat physical and health regen for your party. Flat physical is really good for your pets. Heart of the Wild, pump that up as high as I could for the bonus health for me and my pets. You could probably drop some points out and move them elsewhere, but right now this is just what I'm doing. Oak Skin, really good. Gives armor, increases percent health regeneration, pierce resist, and all retaliation damage. So again, more retaliation damage for you and your pets. It's more so important for the pets, though. Primal Bond, as high as it could go. Again, this got buffed at a certain point. It used to scale terrible past 12, but it scales decently past 12 now. Contra Primal Spirit, max that out. One of the best pets, probably the best pet in the game, honestly, pound for pound. Considering you get that pet, its damage, and all of its abilities for only 12 points. So you can see that all the other pets obviously require tons of points to get that type of damage. So this is going to be your highest DPS pet. Alright, so that pretty much covers everything there. Um, I do use Lightning Strike with my Raven. This is a one-pointer with plus the skills. This is actually really good, but yeah, that pretty much covers all that. So I'm going to go over the items real quick, guys. Now, there are some things that I want for this build that I don't have yet, so please keep that in mind. But as I get them, I will let you know. This main hand is not bad, though. You get some extra pets out of it. It's decent. But I do want a different main hand. The thing that's nice about this is you do get the little spawns from this. They do physical damage, so obviously that's going to be a plus, obviously, with us doing physical and converting to lightning. But they also do chaos damage, so this little buff here will boost their damage quite a bit, too, which is nice. Alright, so I'm using Beast Caller Shroud. The reason why I'm not using the four piece, I'll be discussing here in a second, but I do have two pieces of the Mythical Beast Callers. I'm just waiting to get the other two before I make the full conversion over. When I do that, I don't know if I will drop the shoulders I'm using currently, but I will have to see. Walls run leggings, obviously. All damage, attack speed, retaliation. Hopefully I'll get some upgrades. Primal Instinct is pretty much a must with the Conjurer setup. All the extra little pets here are going to be super useful, obviously doing physical and fire, that's two of your primary damage with this build. A lot of that physical is going to be converted into lightning, so it's very important that we do that. Mythical Voidmancer's Cord, this is only going to synergize with this build even more. This is really good, it gives your pets a chance to gain a huge boost of lightning damage, which is really nice. Beast Caller's Talisman, this is an upgrade here, the Mythical Fiend Flesh Greaves, huge damage boost for pets. And then that damage absorption, which is really nice. 50% chance when hit. Mythical Touch of the Everliving Grove. I love these. The more I use these, the more I enjoy these. Yes, you don't get damage out of these on your pets per se, but the survivability is insanely good, which makes your pets, in theory, deal more damage over time because they can live a lot better. So this is one of the big changes here. On my Death Knight, I was able to kill Mog Drogon. And I've killed him a few times now. The first time I did it with Sirox, so thank you Sirox for helping me with that, that was really awesome. <laughs> Sirox got some really good characters. But this is what dropped off Mogdrogan, I finally did manage to get these. 
and these are insanely good for the setup. I don't know if I'll keep these, depending on if I'm going to run full beast colors or not. I'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. So as you can see, the offhand is a Stormbringer of Malmoth. Again, lots of bonus lightning damage for me and my pets, which is really good. And then a chance on attack to proc some lightning damage as well. These right here, I found a blueprint for these, and I was so happy when I found these. <laughs> this is insanely good. As you can see, you get tons of elemental resistance, get some nice bonuses there. And then your pets get crit, lightning damage, and total speed. And then what's crazy about this is 10% chance on attack to proc an effect to give me bonus lightning damage. And then my pets get bonus flat lightning damage on top of percent lightning damage, as well as converting physical damage into lightning damage. That is insanely good. So these things are pretty much a must with this setup. Using the Beast Caller's Cal, and then Mythical Sovereign Ruby of Domination. So that's pretty much it as far as items go. If you would like to see the components and augments, just pause the video and check it out. So on the devotion side of things, still using still using the flame torrent, put that on Briarthorn. The reason why I put that on Briarthorn is because I put the Elder's Fire on my Hellhound. So he does a lot of fire chaos. Obviously that's good for him, and then on top of that it's reducing enemy fire and chaos resistance. This is still really nice too, the Fiend, because we are boosting percent fire damage, which I said before is one of our primary damages. As you can see, we came over here and we grabbed Raven. Raven's really good for the lightning damage bonus to pets. Super nice. Obviously with the bonus OA, it's really important too. Definitely grab Shepherd's Call. This is probably a must with any pet build. I'd highly recommend doing this on any pet build you run. It's too good to pass up. Grabbed Empty Throne for all the bonus resist. Grabbed Wolverine. So this is basically going to give your pets a bunch of retaliation damage, some defensive capabilities, a little bit of pierce resistance. On top of that, it's going to boost your defensive ability by 4% and your pet's defensive ability by 5%, so that's really nice. I did throw one point here for now. This is probably subject to change at some point, but one point here for the bonus damage to all pets. Then we did grab the Giant's Blood. So you can see the Giant's Blood here gives you crazy healing. Never a bad thing. So another major thing that changed with this build is I'm no longer running Dying God. So I did give up some crit damage, but I gained total speed and offensive ability. So I'm going to be attacking a lot faster and critting more often, just not critting as hard. That's going to be the major difference with this setup. So uh, oddly enough, we come over here and grab Ulto Shepherd of Storms, and we put that on the familiar here. So whenever the familiar crits, it'll do a chain lightning that hits enemies, just bounces around and hits enemies and then it reduces their elemental resistances. So obviously this is going to be really good whenever I get this leveled up, so I'm working on that. And then you can see I do have Howl of Mogdrogan. So this is the frenzy that the pets will go into whenever this ability here procs. Alright, so that should cover the devotion. Except for these two right here, just so you guys know. But that should cover it pretty much. Let's get into some gameplay.
So there you have it guys, you can see the kind of damage this build can do, and this is without full completion of the items that I want. I mean, it's crazy, you just saw me take down the Nemesis boss out here in Ogdenbog. So I can't wait to see what this build turns into. So stay tuned guys, and I'll keep you updated on how this build progresses. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you like, please like, it helps me out. And if you haven't come to check out the stream, please do. There's a link on my main page, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and take care.